The Hendra virus is well known to horse owners, equine veterinarians and other members of the horse community around Australia. It is a disease that is both enigmatic and chilling in its effect. Everyone that has come into contact with this virus has their own story that marks their experience with one of the world's deadliest diseases. The most important risk um, Hendra virus represents is the risk to human health. There's a 60% or so mortality, so a flip of a coin and you come out second best. Uh, look, I was shocked and the whole of our profession was shocked when Ben Canine and Alastair Rogers both died in the normal duties of their work. You're extremely apprehensive. I have a young family, so you're, that's always in the back of your mind. This horse could have Hendra. I went to work when I was 21, mm. 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 you know, and I didn't ask for it. You know, Ben was planning a family. Mm. You can't say we put our hands up for it. I never want to have to deal with another one of my colleagues passing away or being infected by this virus. Since its first victims in the Brisbane suburb of the same name succumbed to Hendra, the virus has become synonymous with a heavy burden that the equine community in Australia has had no choice but to bear. My uh, involvement with Henry goes back to 94, uh, when I was the equine vet that treated the horses at the late Vic Rail Stables in Henry. And as we know now, that's where the Henry virus was discovered. Between 94 and 2008, most of the industry thought of Henry as just a very incidental thing that happened very occasionally. 2011, we had 18 independent events. Most before that, every year, on average, we only have two. So something has happened in 2011, but we still don't understand why. As scientists and the equine industry work hard to capitalise on the gains made by the release of a horse vaccine against Hendra virus, there is still much to be done to ensure that the human and horse tragedies of the past are never repeated. This documentary brings together a range of experiences and insight from the equine community, horse industry and scientific world to explore the future of this virus. The history of Hendra is well documented and well told. However, the virus's place in the overall catalogue of emerging infectious diseases is often not understood. Hendra is not the first, and it certainly won't be the last, in a long line of zoonotic diseases that prey on both humans and animals. We know that over the past decades, um, there have been an increasing incidence of emerging infectious diseases worldwide. 94, we had Hendra, 99, 98, we had a Nipperk, and then 2002, 2003, we had a SARS. And now 2012, 2013, we had this MERS called the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome virus. I guess historically Australia has been nicely protected by our splendid isolation, if you like. You know, horses had to come to Australia on boats. Uh, any horse that had, you know, very virulent disease on the trip over didn't last the trip over. And it's not until just recently that people have started to think that sick horses may actually be a risk to me. We know, um, and many researchers have shown this, that the viruses can infect a variety of different animals. So it is a concern. And we have every expectation in coming years that we will encounter more important emerging infectious diseases in people that have emerged from wildlife. The Hendra virus has taught the horse community some hard lessons. Our horses, and sometimes even our colleagues and friends, have been claimed by this disease, without warning and without mercy. What is it that we've learned from the Hendra virus? How do we adjust our way of life and approach to being with horses? What is it that makes Hendra so hard for the horse community to mitigate against? The horse industry had become a bit lax and so we hadn't informed ourselves about Hendra virus and, um, and really we were behind the eight ball. So there was a very intensive period of time where we had to get up to speed with what everybody else knew about Hendra virus and in some cases change what everybody knew. It was a learning process for everybody, including the scientific community. The hardest thing I believe the horse community has had to face is, is, is changing our way of life a bit on how we interact with our horses. Initially it was how we well, and still is today how we manage our horses on our home properties.